Before we get down to business, let me introduce you to Robert Lawless. Robert Lawless has a Red Sea Max S 500, and what he gives us are little captures of daily life on the reef, short little vlogs. Right now, he's up to vlog number 69. I find this channel fascinating, and I always enjoy his videos. I'll put a link in the description to his latest vlog, so you can check it out if you're interested. And be sure to watch to the end for his unique take on Thumbs Up. All right, here we go. Hey everybody, Reef Girl here, and welcome to my channel. I'm showing you the left-hand side view of Amathia's garden in July of 2019. And I have to give you a heads up because what I'm going to show you in this video, changing the UV sterilizer bulb, we did this a year ago. So the footage from a year ago is what you'll be seeing as we go through the process of changing the bulb. Changing a UV sterilizer bulb is an important maintenance task. And it was really interesting being the very first time we ever did it, what the process was and things we had to watch out for and things that kind of surprised us a little bit. So stick around and I'll show you how it all went down. Let's go back, way back, back into time. It took a while for me to psych myself up for this job because of the awkward location of the sterilizer at the back of my cabinet above the sump. While we're at it, we're also going to remove the feed pump and do some maintenance on it. Before we started anything, we shut off the UV light itself so that there would be no chance of it overheating because there would be no water running across it. Then we unplugged the pump, unscrewed everything, and started to pull stuff out. This is where you find out that where you thought you did a good job managing wires, etc., you really didn't. Step one complete, the pump is out, and you can see that it does look pretty dirty. So while the pump was feeding water into the sterilizer, this hose was feeding water out of the sterilizer and into the chamber where the pipes come down from above. So essentially the sterilizer circulates water through my sump. This hose was also rather grungy. We clipped a towel over the water in the sump just in case anything fell down while we were taking the cover off. So here's the cover. There were only three screws and it did come off fairly easily. This next part is a little tricky. The UV bulb is horizontal in that white housing. And of course it needs a power supply. So at each end, there are small plugs with little pins that supply that power. Those have to be unplugged before we can do anything else. Because of the awkward position and the tight quarters, it wasn't very easy. And there was a little bit of bad language, I have to admit. But eventually it all came loose and we were able to pull that out. Here's the housing that holds the bulb. Water goes in in the bottom left and out at the top right. A quick little flick will push the bulb out a little ways and then it's a simple matter to pull it the rest of the way straight out. On examination, I was pretty surprised at how clean it was, but then I guess I shouldn't be because what that means is that there were no leaks. The next step is to remove the quartz sleeve for careful inspection. It's important to make sure that there are no defects or cracks or chips in the quart sleeve because that's the barrier between the water that goes past the bulb and the bulb itself. Any leaks and you've got problems. After removing the gasket, there is an O-ring that forms a tight seal. And then just like the bulb, a little bit of a push will allow the quart sleeve to be pulled out from the opposite end. On close inspection, the only defect is a little bit of calcium buildup on the outside of the sleeve. So this is really good news. <laughs> it's a bit of a different story on the inside of the housing though. Yeah, that is pretty grungy and it's gonna need cleaning out. So now that everything is apart, it's time to get cleaning. Before and after. Before and after before 
and after. Here's the replacement bulb, and you'll notice that it's UVC light. All the parts are cleaned up, and now it's time to reassemble everything. The main consideration here is to be sure to get all of the O-rings and the gaskets in the right places and installed in the correct orientation to eliminate any possibility of leaks. It really helped to refer back to the video we had taken when we took this apart. I wanted to be sure to show you the cover. All of this is dried up foam from my stupid Bubble Magus Curve A5 skimmer, which would randomly overflow to the point it would actually push the lid off and foam would be spraying everywhere. I hated that thing. It didn't matter how often I wiped this and the inside of the cabinet, it was always dirty. All right, now that I got that little skimmer rant out of the way, <laughs> let's take a look at how dirty the feeder pump is. It's really not as bad as I thought it would be, although there is still quite a lot of gunk in here. This slime coat all over the impeller has a definite impact on efficiency. I'm sure it'll run a lot better once I get it all cleaned up. Later. I have a little confession. I love taking pumps apart, cleaning them, putting them all back together again. I get kind of a weird satisfaction out of it. There it is back in place and before we put the power supply back we have to put the pump back on and test for leaks. The pump's back in, the hoses are connected and it's running. It's been running for about an hour at this point and we've seen zero leaks so that is really great because it means we don't have to take it all apart again and figure out what's going on. So bonus, it worked the first time. Now we can plug in the power supply for the bulb and get that turned on. Everything's plugged back into the bulb and now the best way to see whether it's actually illuminated when we turn on the switch is this. Seeing these two glowing green areas tells us the bulb is actually illuminated. This is spillover. On the right is the outflow, on the left is the intake. So this is success. I'm so glad it's all working. No problem. End of flashback. So here we are back in 2019. And guess what? It's time to change it again. Oh my God. I'm sure you're wondering what the heck you're looking at here. This is my Duncan after dark, and I thought I would try and see if I could count how many heads there are. It's impossible during the day. And I was a little bit surprised at what I found here. This is where the Emerald Crab is hanging out tonight. <laughs> Check it out, <laughs> look at that claw. This was really cool to see because I thought the green wrasse had annihilated both crabs that I put in here, but this guy is still around and still doing his job.